<laughs> gang shit, that's all I'm on. Gang shit, that's all I'm on. <laughs> oh shit, man. This movie is hot, baby. <laughs> Good YouTube, it's your boy T. I'm M. And this is Regret, Regret Nothing. Nothing. And today we got a movie review for Netflix, The Harder They Fall. The Harder They Fall. Boy, this a, ooh, this a good one. Ooh, this a good one. <laughs> I've been waiting on this review all day. <laughs> Hell yeah. So The Harder They Fall is a new, I guess, uh, action western on Netflix starring an all-star cast. You got your Idris Elba, Regina King, Zazzy Beats, Lakeith Stanfield. You got uh, Jonathan Majors, Jonathan Deion Cole, Majors, Deion Cole, my Del man, Delroy Lindo. Delroy Lindo. That's the one I couldn't remember. Uh, R.C. R.J. Siler yeah. from Power Rangers. Yeah, he played the Blue Ranger Billy. That's a good one. Yeah, man. This 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 one of them ones. <laughs> this one of them movies that you know you could put in the culture group. <laughs> Damon Wayans Jr. I right. seen. He, he was. In the movie. Yeah, he was in there. I was like, oh shit, <laughs> not Damon Wayans Jr. <laughs> Damon Jr. You in here? Hell yeah. So the 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 story of this movie is Jonathan Majors' character, who is named Nat Love is looking for revenge on the man who killed his mother and father, Rufus Buck. And he's got his own gang and crew of folks, and they're gonna go find Rufus's crew of folks, and it's gonna be a whole lot of gang shit. <laughs> gang shit, that's all I'm on. Gang shit, that's all I'm on. <laughs> oh shit, man, this movie is hot, baby. <laughs> The fucking tones, the fits, the look, the dialogue, the action, nigga shit. They got it. Get into those characters, man. So you got Jonathan Majors who plays Nat Love, Nat Love's leader in the Nat Love gang. And behind him, you got Zazzy Beats, whose character's name is Will Coach Stage Mary. Coach Stage Mary. Coach Mary. She's essentially like his love interest, also his ride or die bitch, cause everybody needs one, you know what I'm saying? You got my man's RJ Siler's character. I know his last name was Buckler. Jim. Jim Buckler. Uh, then you got the other man's name. I know his real name is Eddie or Eddie. Yeah, Eddie. I can't remember what his character's name, but he was mean with the long range gun. And then, was there one more on their team? Or was it just them? I think it was just them four, right? Yeah. And then, Delroy Lindo joins their gang. He's like the marshal. Yeah, he's a US marshal who catches and, you know, collects bounties on outlaws such as them. And they actually are like, they're not, they're like outlaws, but they're not like outlaws. Cause they rob the guys that rob people. <laughs> So it's like, okay, you just robbed that bank. That's our money now, nigga. <laughs> and then on Rufus's team, you got Stagecoach Mary has a a, a a partner named Cuffy. I forgot Cuffy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cuffy was cool. Uh, a little bit of LGBT rep right there. I actually liked the way they represented her because it wasn't like super let's focus on her sexuality or her representation, but more so she's just an authentic person being a person in a world where, you know, you know, representing in that way probably wasn't as common. And most of them didn't even know she was a woman to like the damn near third act. <laughs> Which I was like, really? Okay. <laughs> it was funny though know, the reveal scene. <laughs> On uh, Idris' squad, you got Rufus Buck, badass leader of the Rufus Buck gang, who also, I guess, is like the head leader of a bunch of other micro gangs, such as the Crimson Hood gang and such shit. And next to him, he's got Regina King's character. Okay, she had like two names. I know Trudy, Trudy one of them. Treacherous Trudy, I think, might have been her OG name. And she was a true badass. 
Uh, she was like my favorite out of all of the characters in the project. Next to her, you got, uh, damn, Cherokee Bill. That's Lakeith Stanfield's character. And then there was, I wanna say it was one more in their squad. Uh, maybe, that, maybe that big dude was one, but they didn't say his name. And anyways, then you got Dion Cole who played Wiley something. Yeah, Wiley something. And he was essentially one of the original members of Rufus's gang. Rufus goes to prison for a stretch. He leaves him with the town Redwood, which we get into. And he ends up becoming like the sheriff of that town. Mm -hmm. And then they end up having a falling out. So, and those are the two squads. So, the plot of the movie is essentially just. Rufus gets let out of prison for a full pardon because he takes out these, I guess, crooked military dudes. And in return for taking out these crooked military dudes, full pardon of all his crimes. And apparently he's done some heinous shit between robbing and murdering and gang shit. And so in response for that, he gets to go back to the little Negro town that he created called Redwood before he went down. And he left Dion Cole in charge of all of that. And Dion Cole decided, well, I'ma just take all of this town's money. I'ma sell this land and I'ma go make my own home and be rich and be a rich little nigga somewhere else. And uh yeah, Rufus came back and he wasn't too cool with that shit. Got to whooping his ass <laughs> for all the people to see. <laughs> And then uh, you got my man Jonathan Majors gang, who he was hunting down the people who killed his mother and father in the beginning of the movie. He killed who he believed to be was the last living man responsible for his parents' death. And then he was finally gonna have peace and settle down with Zazzy Beats. And then he hears that Rufus is out and it's like, oh no, I gotta get that. <laughs> he pulled the trigger. <laughs> and and great, I strong don't. opening to the movie. Ooh, ooh, wasn't it? That motherfucker just started off just family, you know, praying and shit, about to eat dinner, little happy family. And then it's just this ominous figure that you know is Idris, but you never see his face. And he just puts two little golden pistols on the table. <sighs> Mama, catching both these shots. Daddy, catch both these shots. And then I'm gonna leave my little boy with Lucy. A little something to remember me by. <laughs> nice little little Jesus piece right on the forehead. <laughs> oh, real gangster shit, man. Real gangster shit, man. Oh man, I'm just uh, this shit. <laughs> What'd you think of the like the story and the in the, the plot? Yeah, every plot was it was great story, great <laughs> twist reveal in the movie. Uh, I loved all the characters. Jim was my favorite character in the movie. <laughs> that nigga was funny as hell. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. nigga was funny. If if I was being offered a role, I would want, yeah, I would want Jim's character. That, that'd be the one I feel like I could probably do the best with. Uh, but I also would like, if, like, when I get older, like, to take, I would probably want, like, the Keith's character. Cause Lakeith's character was real like, he was real sophisticated, but he was still like a gangster. <laughs> he was like, all right guys, let's all just be accommodable and everybody just relax and there'll be no violence. Hold on, s -s 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 -s. nigga, don't get twisted. I'll cut your ass up in this bitch. <laughs> Way he sliced my mans up in the car though. <laughs> I was like, damn. I wanted to see some more of that shit. Oh, I wanted to see him cut up another nigga too. <laughs> Yeah, he was witty and shit. Like there was gunfire going on. He's like, God damn! <laughs> yeah, he's like, son of a bitch! Son of a bitch! <laughs> oh man, yeah, he was a real nigga. Ah, uh, fuck with it. They were all real niggas, to be honest. I think Zazzy, first scene with, with Jonathan Major, she gives him a kiss and then rocks that nigga. <laughs> hey, he ain't dropping the blunt, though. <laughs> he did not drop the blunt. He, got, he, he stumbled, got up, dang hurt, fell. Fuck it. <sighs> Didn't drop my weed. That's all I know. <laughs> she put me on my head. I ain't dropping my weed. <laughs> then you got motherfucking uh, treacherous Trudy or whatever they they was calling her. Man, Regina King, bro. She was just 
She was so fucking intimidating. She reminded me of my mother in so many ways. <laughs> just like, just like, if fuck around and find out was a person. <laughs> like, you know this motherfucker will put their fucking hands on if you try them. <laughs> like, that, that scene where she's telling her the story about her sister and she was peeling that fucking apple, I was like, this is so intense because I don't know if she's gonna stab you or, or kick you or just, just continue talking to you. That's the intimidation factor. <laughs> as, a, as a nigga that has had a black mother who you just don't know how she's gonna respond sometimes, yeah, yeah, I definitely felt that intimidation and I like her swagger. They fight scene was cool too. I'm glad those two had got a good fight scene because they, they were definitely building that tension. Oh man. Yeah, they were scrapping for a little, for a little while. Yeah, they had a good little scrap too. Was breaking shit and beating each other ass. Yeah, definitely was a good fight. Uh, Idris, I feel like Idris definitely was like a intimidating and an imposing like man. He had a you know less is more approach. I, I ain't too much for the words and the chit chat shit. He he would he would like kill a nigga and then just kind of like look around like. <laughs> like, you can tell when he's doing gangster shit, he's already thinking like beyond you, you're dead already, it's whatever. <laughs> that one nigga, he was like, he was like, w w what's your name? I think he was like Jim or, or something. <laughs> Shot that nigga smooth. He was like, yeah, rest in peace, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was giving me, he was giving me Suge Knight energy. I was, I was getting real Suge Knight vibes. <laughs> Like, this is death row. What you gonna name this shit? <laughs> yeah, I was definitely fucking with his character. So, there was a moment when I thought that the movie was gonna have it where both teams were gonna kind of be like decent in a way, just squabbling over this petty uh, circumstance because they had the, the town. So I thought Idris' gang was trying to try to save the town. And then some white folk was gonna kind of come in and they was gonna have to unite to kill those white people for a second there. I'm glad it didn't go that direction because I, I really wanted to see like two gangster black factions go against each other and see, you know, who's gonna be the the head, the head HNICs. Uh, in a lot of ways, I felt like Idris' character was kind of like a Thanos in a sense of like, he's definitely the villain. But his objective might have been good. Like he created Redwood, which was a town for black people in that time period, which was something that is definitely hard to do. and something that black people were not, they didn't want us to thrive in that way. The, the only problem was he didn't have the personality or the wherewithal to actually help those people. He kind of did it because he felt as though it was something that needed to exist, but he didn't really give a fuck about them, which kind of makes it like the Thanos in a way in my mind, because it's like, I want to do good, but I don't know how, because I am a piece of shit. <laughs> so yeah, that was, a, that was an interesting character for him. I think they could have probably given him just one more level of dimension, and he'd have probably been a fully fleshed out uh, character, but yeah, man, I got, I got very few negative notes on this motherfucker. I was just <laughs> watching this bitch like, yes, nigga, <laughs> The score, what'd you think of the, the score of this movie? Uh, it was cool. I mean, uh, nothing really, it was a lot of uh, reggae in the score, but none of it like really grabbed my attention. I'll have to listen to it again. Yeah, the score had a lot of reggae. I listened to the, the soundtrack earlier today. Uh, there's a lot of reggae. There's a couple of uh, Jay-Z bangers that I definitely fuck with. One with the locks, Jay the Kiss, and uh, Conway the Machine that I was rocking with. The intro song, Guns Go Blam with Kid Cudi and Jay-Z is also a banger. But yeah, there's it's a couple of R&B ditties in there too. But yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting vibe. Not too bad. Uh, it's a weird... Um, it's one of those movies where it's like, okay, black people decided we're gonna put hip hop into this period piece and see how that, that melds. Sometimes it works, sometimes it's like, mm, okay, it's different, but yeah.
I can say I definitely want more movies like this. Not necessarily a sequel to this, and not necessarily a western. A uh, predominantly black cast in a genre where you don't traditionally see black people thrive in this genre. It's like sci-fi, western, cyberpunk, futuristic, uh, medieval, ancient time. I want to see niggas fight dragons and shit, you know, but be balling, cool ass black people. Not slaves, not fucking servants and peasants or getting whipped Stereotypes. and shit. Right, cooning, none of that shit. I just want to see regular black people be bosses in and of their own selves and have agency. With good scripts behind them. Good, competent directing. Good scripts and competent directors and a good solid tone and good acting, good cast, you know? Yeah, which is all the things I just felt like this movie had going for it. Uh, you think, like, non-black people would value this in the same way that we do? No. <laughs> it's impossible. Why, why are you saying that? <laughs> no. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> no. No, no, no. This is for niggas. Niggas only. <laughs> I was thinking about that. I was like, if I was not black, how would I be this? Well, if it, if it was a white cast, I'd be like, well, this is just like a Western, which is fine, I guess. If it was like a diverse cast of non-whites, I'd be like, well, this was fun. It was definitely a fun movie at the very least. It's exciting and stimulating. But yeah, being black, wanting more blackness, the cast that I know and love, yeah. Yeah, there's a little bias there. There's a little bias there. But yeah, I definitely still would recommend it to non-blacks. You know, white people. <laughs> I'm sure there's white people that love it. You know? Even if they're just going, yeah! Yeah, this is cool. Yeah, this yeah, is cool. Yeah. Uh-huh, that was it's a thing. different. That was a thing. It was different. <laughs> I didn't quite understand some of the lingo, but it was fun. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. yeah, they did the thing that's very common now. It, like, Lovecraft Country did it in every episode, and it's taking the time to kill like 30 racist white people in the most violent way possible. <sighs> like, when they was on their stagecoach, and he was like, all right, he lives, fuck the rest of them. And they were just like, bra, bra, ba, ba. I was like, damn. And this is why we need a season two of Lovecraft Country. That shit was like nectar to my damaged soul. <laughs> and like taking out racists. I could watch that shit all day. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, what do you think they're gonna go do going forward? Do you think they're gonna do a sequel? Because they left uh, Regina King alive. Yeah, uh, the director said himself he left the door in his words, wide, wide, wide open for more. Um, so maybe a sequel, maybe not, or he could do uh, some other westerns in this genre. Maybe not with this cast, but another western. Yeah, I could, I could, I could fuck with either direction. <laughs> he called it the the cowboy cinematic universe. Is what the <laughs> the director called it. All right. All right. Yeah, I would definitely watch a sequel and or spinoff uh, to this or an anthology that connects to it in a universal kind of way. Yeah, I would definitely, definitely watch more. Yeah, yeah, you got me, bro. <laughs> say when, that's it. <laughs> and say when and less, say less. <laughs> Absolutely. I just wish that they either would have let Lakeith's character live or uh, killed him in a cooler way. I didn't much care for how he died. <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't care for how Cuffy shot him in the neck? It was fine that Cuffy shot him in the neck. It was just anticlimactic. Because he had that, you know, moment with uh, Buckworth. And then he blew homie shit apart. <laughs> in the most uh, surprising kind of way. I mean, I figured homie was probably going to die. I just didn't expect him to get snuck. <laughs> he was just like, Frow! I was like, damn, little homie dead already? <laughs> Niggas always slinging, counting so damn slow. I was like, damn, man, you really did the homie like that. 
Mm-hmm. So I was hoping that he would like get to do some more than that knife shit and then kind of die in a blaze of glory or survive. But yeah, his you know, shots in the neck and you just stumble out in the street and die. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same time for that. Uh, his death was the only one that I ain't fuck with. Uh, the reveal of Idris actually being the brother. I fucked with that. I fucked with that. Yeah, it was a nice twist. Didn't, didn't really see it coming. Didn't but you, see that coming at all. You know, appreciate, you know, appreciate that, didn't, that you couldn't. It wasn't predictable. Mm-mm. Because I actually, I had never thought about, like, while watching the whole movie, I never thought about, like, why did he kill his parents? I just figured like his dad had beef with him at some point back in the day when the gang know, old money or just, you know snitched on him or something. Right, right. You know, I thought it was just gonna be some like you know your dad was a bitch, you a bitch, and I'm a kid. I thought it was just you know something like that. Uh, but nah, he was like nah, you know my dad, you know he was a piece of shit. He killed my mom, then he dipped, and I was looking for this nigga, and then I was like oh shit, <laughs> I know where he going. He's like, I finally found that nigga. Come to find out he got a whole family, a new wife, and a little boy. About 10 years old, should I say. I rolled up there, you know, I killed his wife, him, and then I couldn't kill my little brother. (laughs) I was like, oh shit. It's a Sasuke and an Itachi situation. That's an auto reference, by the way. Yeah, I'm just like, nigga, (laughs) you killed the the fam but you couldn't kill your brother dog that's deep i was like oh some depth there i fucked with it <laughs> he was just kind of like no nigga no nigga it was like darth vader saying i am your father except for you know i'm your brother <laughs> he was like why would you do this to me <laughs> so yeah that was <laughs> that was a good that was a good reveal and a nice little ending to the movie there so I'm definitely interested in seeing where they would go since, you know, John's character survived and Zed's character survived. And Delroy Lindo was out there being a nice boss. And I actually looked up, uh, all those characters were real people. They, they said that in the beginning. And yeah, not all of them were outlaws. I think Rufus was an outlaw. Nat was just a cowboy, and Buckworth was an outlaw. Everybody else was either somebody that lived in that time period that did something else that was famous, or they were just like normal people. I think uh, the marshal was actually a marshal, though. And those were their real name. And they used everybody's real name. So, yeah. Uh, the trailer... The trailer was hot, and I was I was afraid it was going to be one of those situations where the trailer real fire and the movie kind of lackluster. But nah, that shit was dope. <laughs> that, shit was, that shit was all the way lit. It probably could have been maybe 15, 30 minutes shorter. There was some parts where it just felt like it was, it was kind of stretching. <laughs> like, I was like, I know it's going to be a final battle. We can go ahead and get to it. We don't got to do all this other stuff. <laughs> What would you rate this? <laughs> it gets a it gets a fuego. Best best movie of the year so far, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm thinking like yeah, that might be best movie of the year. We should probably do a video of like what's best movie of 2021. Maybe next month sometime. Yeah. Cause as of right now, I'm like easily top three, if not number one. I'd have to reflect. I don't. I can't think off the top of my head anything that would beat it right now. So. Yeah, so unless something comes out next month and it just like blows my mind, yeah, this is probably the one. Yeah, absolutely, definitely a fuego. Y'all niggas get one of these. <laughs> Certified. Stamps. <laughs> Netflix, you, you doing some good shit over there. You know, Netflix, it's hit or miss with you. Sometimes you'd be like, eh, okay, I'll forget this in a second. And then, hey, now, you know, like, that's why I'm, that's why I put some <laughs> that's why y'all the king of streaming. King of streaming, boy. That's why everybody else says they got their own Netflix. Because <laughs> they know who daddy is. Keep it up. Proud of you. <laughs> All right. Any last thoughts? Hey, let's get some more of these. Hell yeah. Pronto. Too sweet. Also, if y'all want some more brothers, you know, we act. Call the holler at you boys. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Shoot us the plug. Right. I look real nice in a cowboy drip. You know what I'm saying? I can rock that shit. <laughs> you know, man, you have one of them shits over the shoulder and shit. Yeah, fuck with us. But, anyways, I'm M. I'm T. And we regret, regret nothing. nothing. And if you liked our reviews, like and subscribe for more content just like this. We got tons of videos coming y'all's way. And share on all the socials too Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of them. All of them. <laughs> you bitch! Yeah.